G'day guys and welcome to another episode of TRC, the Terrain Racing Channel. I'm Brad James and have I got a treat for you. Today we're going to be looking at the Ute Master load lid for the next gen Raptor. <laughs> months maybe it's got about 10 11 000 k's on it right about now i have been undecided to date whether i should go a canopy or a torno cover or an electric roller shutter but when i stumbled across the ute master range of stuff i really got hooked straight onto their load lid i think number one it's for me going to allow some easy storage of stuff on top when i'm racing back and forth site and doing drop-offs not that the raptor gets used for work too much just gets used for driving around and looking pretty but for those times that I do need to grab the odd bit of gear, I can just throw it straight on the top of the lid. I know I've got a 200 to 300 kilo load rating on that. Now, I believe they say from factory, it's 400 kilo static load rating and 200 kilos dynamic. Right behind me here, I have the crate that has rocked up two days ago. That's right, two days ago. I've been sitting here waiting to crack this thing open and have a look. It is Tuesday night, so it is shed night. Ben will be here very shortly to assist me in this and it's going to be a nice change from working on dirty old patrols as you can see the patrol in the background is coming together nicely i'm about to drop a whole bunch of videos on where i've got to on that i've kind of filmed a large percentage of the process for those that have started watching the videos again and are familiar with the old series to where we got to now there has been a lot of work and i have documented a lot of it so i'm kind of keen to put that together and just do a few snapshots of what has brought us to here but today ute master load lid we are all about getting the back of this raptor looking sweet behind me i have my 2023 ford ranger raptor i am absolutely in love with this car i am that's right auto start i might just shut it down so i can hear I've locked the keys inside, so I'm just unlocking it. There we go. So as I was saying, it's been about four months since I've had this Raptor, and I really haven't done much to it. I got the tint done from one of my good mates, Shan, over at Surf Wagon in Ballina. I got the factory bonnet protector and weather shields that go down each side of the windows. And other than that, it is absolutely bone stock. And I wanted to keep it that way for a little while, just so I could get a feel for the car, get an understanding of what's available out there. Seeing they are still fairly new and guys are still working on aftermarket parts, I just wanted to have it sitting stock for a little while and just get an understanding of what's going to be available out on the market. One thing that became very clear for when I go to Woolworths and pick up the groceries is that if it's raining outside, my groceries get wet. So I had to rectify that problem for a couple of reasons. The real reason, we're at the end of November right now, and the real reason is I'm heading down to Canberra with my family for Christmas. We're going to be taking the Raptor down there and I thought I just can't risk driving all that way without some sort of weather protection for clothes and bedding and all the other stuff that we're going to bring. And also I'm going to be doing three days at Summonats while I'm down there. So I just wanted something that was secure, something that I could just pack full of stuff if I had to. And being the load lid, I can also put a whole bunch of weight on top of the Ranger or on top of that Raptor back lid and just take some extra stuff if needed. And I'll run you through the options that I went. There's a few options when you're ordering the Ute Master load lid that does start to add up in price, but I think it's really worth doing because it gives you so much versatility. Now, look, if you're the type of guy that's DIY and keen to give stuff a go yourself, the cheapest option is to just buy the basic Ute Master load lid. It saves you heaps of money, and then you can do some additions to it later. I've still got to unbox it and have a really good look at this thing, but I'm really excited to pull it apart. So let's get into it. Which way do I lift it from? Oh, nice. Oh, hell. And that's a cool bit of kit. Very cool. I didn't actually realize at the time, but this comes with a, I don't know what you call it, but it's the rail that you can get a whole bunch of different accessories for that just kind of click in to this surface here. But straight off the bat, first impressions is very nice. It's a good old, it's essentially just a good two mil, I believe, piece of aluminium. Master logo, little lock section there that we'll look at. 
So these side rails were additional add-ons as well as these bashings. I can already tell that these might be vibrating and a bit annoying, but there is a plastic, like, or almost rubbery plastic around here, so hopefully it's not too bad. Now, on the website when I ordered this, it actually came with some cast rails. I ended up speaking with Loadmaster, and these are the ones with the laser cutout, I suppose, elongated hexagons, that I really like the look of them. And when I spoke to the guy on the phone from Master, who was really helpful actually, he wasn't sure what I was talking about at the start and then went, oh, that's right, it's the warrior style, I believe, side rails, which I think looked heaps better than the cast. The cast were just literally round bar with a couple of down droppers that supported it. Now it comes with a whole bunch of other brackets and accessories that I'm assuming we will get to work out where they go soon, but this is actually a fairly heavy duty piece of kit. Got a decent amount of weight on it. Hurry up, Ben. Where are you? We've got to put it on the car. Well, we just had to do it <laughs> yeah, straight into it. I was just telling Ben that we're, I'm filming again tonight and I that... said I'm not talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's kind of already in it. As he got here, my bad, he checked the... You need some uh, Sikaflex and it needs to be black because obviously black. And he checked the bottle and of course yours truly got a white. So very devoted about that. But it um, gave us a chance to take the Raptor out in the rain, which we should, probably should have filmed. <laughs> but it was just a whole lot of two-wheel drive and no traction control which is always a bit of fun yeah very pumped we're going to start getting the bed of the raptor prepped i haven't even looked through the instructions ben's only learning this for the first time but while i'm at it i'm pretty impressed so far with the instructions it's pretty detailed it has all of the parts labeled and part numbers and stuff like that and at each new step it has a qr code and you can scan that with your phone or your ipad or whatever you have and it'll give you a short video for that specific piece. Making installs hopefully easy. First impressions. You haven't even touched it yet, have you? No, not at all. First impressions. And don't be mean to it. Yeah. She's right. It's not bad, yeah. eh? We'll see how it fits first. Um, the other part that Ben hasn't seen. Let's just pull this forward a fraction. Because this is where it gets interesting and you'll like it. You ready? Good size frame, nice laser cutout pieces here. I'm assuming that's the side rail support that sits on the edge. But I wasn't really expecting this frame because I hadn't seen one enough. Right. Definitely would be adding a increased amount of stability and obviously that's where they get their load rating. I wonder if it's got any load stuff. But yeah, pretty impressed so far with the build quality. We'll see how the fitment goes and a few other bits and pieces but very keen to get it on board. All right, so we'll probably read through the first couple of pages, get our head over it, and then we'll be back soon with the steps that we're gonna do. First part is the weather seal, which is simply really this bracket here. There's a little bit of silicon up under these joints here that we need to put in. And then these guys here wrap around this kind of contoured section. Slide up in there, a couple of bolts to go through. And as you can see, Ben's starting to take these factory tops off, which I believe go back on. Where is that silicon? Look at that, gave it a bit of a touch up there. <laughs> there we go, we have this piece off. This is a little bit harder than we thought, but not too bad. Amazing already how much sand and grit and stuff, and this hasn't even been off road. Well, you live on a dirt road. So. I live on a dirt road, <laughs> yeah, thanks Ben. It's not very long, but there you go. We'll give that a bit of a clean up. Have a real look at how bad we did with the metal scraper. Oh, mate, beautiful. We wouldn't dream about it. And then onto this side. So essentially it's just prizing these suckers to get in and get it off. So we finally got these sides off, which were a bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, now is the step where we need to put the weather strip on. 
So I'm going to go over and just clean all of that mud and dirt off with a rag and then I'll go back over with wax and grease remover and do a final clean ready to stick it down. This was pretty painful, just take your time and if in doubt just give it a little wreath and you'll break something. I've just put this tape down in this little groove, turns this little tight corner and now freaking Ben tells me that we just put those suckers back on. Yeah, but do you want it inside the line of it? Right. I'd say so. <laughs> Surely. Put those okay. back on and then we're on to the next stage. But we're already a good longer than an hour into this. But we're doing it well and we're doing it right. So we're going to click those back on and then get to the next stage. It's like, can't we just lift up the lid and put a lid on? Seems ridiculous. Well, maybe there. Maybe. That little strip is on there. This is where you'll find the really crappy screws that have blue Loctite on them. So we used the old Tool Pro ratchet and you can just get a good amount of pressure on that and it's nice and easy and gentle because you've got good leverage and something solid to hang on to. Um, and then just kind of work them and then once it gets to a stage you can press the go button and zip them the rest of the way out. Next step is we're debating here whether these are designed to pull all the way down flush with this because as you can see over this side if you just nip them up there seems to be a bit of space otherwise you kind of pull this bracketry weird but if you do pull that part down then it kind of causes a little bit of a bowing here so we'll just play with that at the moment everything's still kind of loose-ish and then this one's the next one to put back on our bracket goes here that we just took off new bracket goes on there and attaches one there and a couple there and i'm assuming that's where the load lid sits so i'm going to do the same for here poke out this little hole here stick it on there so you can get your bolt in and then put that bracket on all right guys we are ticking along we've left left this bracket loose just so we can line that up easier the front back brackets are in the front backets Nice and tight. Decided to snug this down, which looks like it seals pretty good on that. So the next step is picking up this bad boy and throwing it on the back and then a couple of bolts underneath and we are good to go. It's all coming together a lot quicker now. The big chunk is in the seal kit that you pay extra for. Last bit, put this bit of cardboard down the back so we don't um, scratch the back of the Window exposed, paint, and then we're about to lift this load lid on. I'm good, how are you? It's not as light as I thought it would be. You're going to get up to, you're going to press it up to the chest side. Yeah, let's just let it lead on the stage here. Two sixes and two eights. Final step, lid is on. These little wing guys bolt through that into this here. And we've got to lift this up. There's another hole that I'm pretty sure that goes in, but no, it wouldn't be that. And I don't think they gave us that bolt, eh? No. Bastards. But that one will go, won't it? This one? Yeah. Should fit in that thread, so M6. Oh yeah, it's just this will yeah. this head will pull. Oh. Yeah, it'll need a washer. There is no washers, but. Right? No, you won't supply. What? Supply my own washers. It is the following day. Look what arrived. This, my friends, is the bar for the. Merry Christmas. This is the load shift bar. Come on, you should correct yourself, shouldn't you? Sorry guys, just changing some settings. But this is the load stop bar for the 
fray. So I'm gonna throw that on really quickly. They did drill the holes in it, so hopefully I'll just undo this and plonk it on. And then we'll do a cinematic B-roll on how awesome this looks on the Raptor. Cue getting it done. All right, I'm gonna undo this and then get back to you. Load stop for the destroyer side rails. Oh yeah, do a whole bunch of that. Great. Great. All right, I need to pack up this rubbish before it gets blown around the place and then we'll get into this. All right, so as I said, um, Ute Master had already pre-drilled these holes because I did order it with the stop. The stop just didn't come in time. Luckily, it was pretty tight that these holes only just lined up. So whoever's in your shop, no. <laughs> just check that paper template better next time. So we're gonna nip those up. This kind of long bar there sits over the top and then there's a new piece that kind of molds in this section and that section. But overall fitment has been pretty good and I'm, I'm definitely impressed with the quality. It's good solid stuff. So yeah, we're just gonna get in, zip it up and then I'll give you a look at the final product. Here we are, finished putting the Ute Master load lid on the Raptor. So pumped that the um, the load shift stopper arrived earlier than I thought. I did drive around a bit today with the Raptor just between jobs and doing a few things. Really can't tell any difference. I did think that maybe it would make a clanging sound a little bit just, and that these might make a bit of a, a rattly noise or but really it's been absolutely great. Did not hear it at all. Absolutely no wind noise from it. So big shout out to uh, Ute Master. You guys have absolutely outdone yourself on this product. Really excited to put it through its paces and load it up for our trip down to Canberra in uh, a couple of weeks over the Christmas break. Yeah, what can I say? The installation was fairly simple. Definitely the hardest part about the installation was these plastic trims and removing that. The rest of it is really straightforward. I love the little final touch of the uh, stainless um, or little aluminium plate behind the Lo Master logo. Just sets it off nicely. All of their little, um, I don't know if it's water jet or laser or whatever it is, but just their CNC little cutouts on all their bracketry and just really top notch and done well. Um, feels solid, feels like you'd happily load it up and um, go away and beat it in the bush. So definitely keen to do a long-term review on this, but um, for now, I'm Brad Janes. Thanks for watching TRC, the Terrain Racing Channel. See you soon.